Good morning and greetings friends. It is another dreary day here on the farm. We've had a few more rain days and rain rain can go away because we're ready for some sunshine. But we have had a couple of sunny days here and there spread through all this rain. So the other day when it was sunny, I was able to get some of my seeds planted for my apothecary garden. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Steady on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. I know what it's like to be broke, yeah I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down <laughs> I had a lot of great feedback from my last video and people really wanting to learn about medicinal herbs, medicinal plants, so that's what I'm doing. So later on, I'm gonna go over our first one and you probably have it growing around your house and it's one of the first ones to come up for spring. So if you don't have it now, you probably will very soon. So stick around for that. So we've been really busy with planting lots and lots of seeds and as you can tell right here we have all kinds of stuff growing from beets to tomatoes to spinach to lettuce more tomatoes dahlias well the other day i got two trays of seeds planted but there's so much more i want to plant but i'm out of trays mike and the kids planted 12 trays of uh, of seeds for our market garden the other day so we're pretty much out well, I'm running into this that what am I gonna plant in? Well, I really don't have anything, uh, so I had an idea. I'm gonna use something that I grew last year to actually plant into uh, my seeds for this year. When I looked around the other day and I didn't have any more trays to use, I thought, you know, the birdhouse gourd would probably be a good option. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But you know what? It'll probably at least allow me to sprout the seedlings and get them to a size where I can transplant them. So as you just saw, I uh, cut this one open. Now this one, it looks a little moldy on the inside and uh, I don't know if I really want to start my seeds in that but the other day I went ahead and cut a few more open and it was drier and they didn't show any signs of mold so I'm gonna use those 
and uh, I'm gonna start some more seeds. I think I'm gonna start some calendula um, because I really want to grow calendula for all of its good healing medicinal benefits. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. If you're thinking about growing uh, birdhouse gourds, they are really easy to grow. They just kind of grow themselves and you don't have to do anything to them. And uh, if you ever want some seeds, just grow one plant because these right here, I think these put together are from just two gourds. So you will have more than enough seeds to share with everyone. And last year, I think I only had three plants and they were volunteers. I think just some seeds had gotten um, thrown out and these plants just started growing and they took off. And I think there was three plants and we got around 35 gourds off of those. And uh, so they can be fun projects. You can use them for all kinds of things like birdhouses. I think as a homeschool project, we're gonna do that here soon with the kids and let them decorate a birdhouse so we can hang it outside for all the nesting birds this spring. So it's just a, a really fun thing to grow. So I got those filled up and then I started thinking about some drainage issues and it would probably make the birdhouse gourd rot out a lot faster if there wasn't any drainage. So I went ahead and drilled some holes in the bottoms and then filled them up again. So I think I'm going to throw some basil in one and in the other I think I'm going to do some uh, calendula. So we'll see how it turns out. I don't know if it's going to work but it's just what I have. And that's a big part of being on a homestead, as most of you know, is that you just have to use what you have. I also thought the tops of these gourds would be pretty cool with growing something in them too. So I'm, I don't have anywhere to set them that they would stand up. Maybe as the temperatures get warmer, maybe I'll plant some lettuce or something in these and uh, I can just sit them in the ground or set them somewhere just to make them look neat to add some interest to to my garden as well so we'll see what happens Okay, so here they are. Here is my calendula, the Pacific mix. And here are two different kinds of basil. I thought that may be neat. Uh, the lettuce leaf is like a really large leaf basil. And then the red freddy is, uh, I thought I would be able to definitely uh, tell them apart because the red freddy is red and the lettuce leaf is it's green so um, that's why I did two in one so we'll just see what happens there's nothing wrong with experimenting and trying new things and uh, that's all part of the homesteading life or the farm life now I want to take you to go see the seeds that I started last week and some of them have already sprouted and I haven't looked at them today and all you plant lovers gardeners out there I know the hardest thing is waiting for seeds to sprout so I want to show those to you so come on So here are all of my little seedlings. So it really looks like my borage, which is right here, is starting to come up. Some of this, like this right here is a radish. I know because some of the seeds got, from where we do microgreens, got in there but 
All these over here are my different types of tomatoes. And it looks like most of them are coming up pretty good. And this right here is lion's tail. I'm excited about growing it too because it has a lot of medicinal properties I'm excited to learn about. So I pulled out my other tray too. And if you can tell, there's not as much that you can see on this one. But this right here is chamomile. And then we have, oh, it looks like stevia is sprouted. And yarrow. And this is more calendula down here, a different kind. And this one is bee balm. And, oh, this is a cabbage. This is a... It's a variegated colored cabbage that I thought would be neat. Just to add some color. And uh, it looks like everything else is taking its time. So if you can't tell, I'm really excited about the herbs that I'll be growing this year. And I do want to do a shout out for the Bootstrap Farmer. These humidity domes are fantastic. Uh, I started watering my seeds just to keep them moist. Uh, here in the grow room because we it, it's heated I was having to water them twice a day and then my lovely husband he said uh, I went ahead and put some humidity domes on your seeds well guess what I haven't had to water my seeds in at least two days with the humidity dome on so it's making sure that all the moisture stays in there and the warmth so they'll be able to germinate. So huge shout out to Bootstrap Farmer. Uh, there are links in the description box below on where you can get these. And uh, I highly recommend these if you really want a good start for your seeds. So now I want to talk about what our herb slash weed slash plant uh, with medicinal values is for this time. And that is plantain. And you may be thinking of the fruit plantain that's kind of like a banana, but not. That's not what I'm talking about. Come here. I want to show you what I'm talking about because there's already some starting to grow. Even though it's tiny, it, it, it is a survivor plant, let me tell you but I want to show you. Plantain grows in the most hard to grow places. Uh, like right here at our door where we walk every single day. It has already started to poke through the ground and, uh, and it's, still, it's still pretty chilly today. But I'm, I'm going to show you right here at our front door. It's already come up this spring. Well, into winter. And that's not the only place. That's one kind of plantain. That plantain is the broadleaf plantain. And uh, you'll find it in lots of different places. It grows all over. But here's another variety of plantain uh, called narrowleaf plantain or plantain lanceolata because it looks like a sword. Type. Well, kind of. When I tell people kind of what it looks like, I also say it almost looks like a ribbon with a point. And uh, it has these ribs on it right here that uh, are pretty distinguishable. Not a lot of other plants have these. So that's how you can tell what you're dealing with. But it, I love plantain. It grows everywhere almost. It loves rocky, compacted soil. And uh, it's just a great plant. Come on and all. I want to tell you all about it. Okay, I'm back in the grow room because really it's cold outside and I just don't want to stand out there. So, we're going to go over uh, broadleaf plantain, which is Plantago major, uh, narrowleaf plantain that I showed you, plantain lensolata, and then there's another uh, plantain called plantain aruglii. It looks really similar to the broadleaf plantain and uh, I don't have any right here to show you so we'll just have to wait until spring pops and I'll be able to find some to show you. But what's really indicative of all plantains is like I was talking about the ribs. So e even the broadleaf plantain you're going to feel these ribs on the, the bottom side of the leaves. So you may be asking like what what are the uses of plantain and my number one use we've been using this for years is for bug bites for stings for scratches for any type of abrasion any type of skin irritation um, you name it we have used it 
for that. For stings and bites and scrapes and things that you get like I was talking about, how you use the plantain on those is that you take the leaf and it, you can smash it up. The easiest way to do it is just chew it up a little bit. And just get the all the juices coming out of that and then you just rub it on whatever has been stung or bit or um, you know any of those. You just rub it on and you will be amazed at how fast the it'll stop stinging or burning or itching. Um, we have used it so many times. One time I called Josiah, I think he was uh, three or four. Uh, I heard him beating on something outside of the door and actually when I came outside he had plantain leaves that he had gotten and he was smashing them with a rock because he had gotten an ant bite and so he knew to go find plantain. He knew what it looked like. He picked it himself smashing it up to rub on his ant bite because he already knew how much it helped and uh, that just goes to show you that kids kids can learn about plants too and it is a really a wealth of information for them. Another time that we use plantain is uh, when Micah got ant bites. He had fire ants like climb up his shirt and he had been stung or bitten I don't know how many times at least 10 times on his back and earlier that day Mike had actually made plantain tea to drink for himself so there was still some sitting on the stove. So what I did was I took a washcloth and dipped it in that plantain tea and then rubbed it on Micah's back. And within two hours, maybe three hours, you couldn't even tell where he had been bitten by the fire ants. So we are big time believers in the powerful uh, healing properties that are in plantain. And plantain is actually one of the plants that I infuse into an oil to make my salves, which is great for skin healing. And uh, one day I'm going to show y'all how to infuse the oil and make a salve that, that you can have at your home for, you know, those random stings, bites, bruises, anything like that. And it is super good for it. And you'll be amazed at how well it'll help you heal. And see, that's the thing about plantain. Its number one job is uh, healing and being an anti-inflammatory. It is wonderful. And not only for your skin, I also use it in my teas that I brew. And uh, it's really good for your gut health and if you uh, need to lower inflammation in your intestines. Uh, I tend to have some intestinal issues and if I eat something that I shouldn't, I don't feel real well, but plantain made into a tea is wonderful to drink. Um, I enjoy it. It doesn't have a really strong flavor, so you could put, you could mix it with something else, maybe some peppermint tea, or by itself is fine. It's not like uh, nettle. Nettle is a little earthy. Plantain is is not so much. So it's really palatable for most people. And like I said, if not, just mix it with something and you'll still be getting those healing benefits. And, uh, and that's what you want whenever you're dealing with, you know, ulcers, any type of gastrointestinal uh, inflammation. Not only is it good for lowering inflammation, it's also actually healing those cells. So in your intestines it's helping to heal your intestines and just like it's it can heal your intestines by drinking the tea you can also you know heal your skin whenever you use it in a salve and uh, it also will help reduce scarring so you probably won't get away with no scarring but it will be dramatically reduced with uh, with plantain salve you can also use the tea if you feel like you're just run down or there's a cold coming on or something. And Mike and I have done this in the past before too and it really helps is go pick some plantain, make some tea and drink it and you're already going to help your body start fighting off whatever is trying to invade. And one really interesting thing that I found out is that um, pathogens like to like huddle together and it's called a biofilm. It's almost like a, a cluster of pathogens and 
Plantain is one of the herbs, because there are more, that break through this biofilm and it just busts everything apart so your body can attack the individual pathogens and more easily overcome them. Because whenever it's all bunched together, you're not able to, to bust into that. Your, your body is, it, it's harder. So whenever you drink plantain tea, whenever you're sick, it helps break up those pathogens and allows your body uh, to take care of them. The leaves are also edible, so uh, but they're pretty tough. So if you do eat them, you probably want to harvest them whenever they're really, really small. And even then, they can still taste a little tough, especially the plantain lanceladas. Oh, I, I think the broadleaf plantain would probably be a little easier to chew than the other. And, uh, and I've, I've done that before. I've eaten them, just picked it out of the yard and eaten it. One thing you do want to make sure of is if you are harvesting the plantain from somewhere that's not close to you, you want to make sure that things aren't being sprayed on it. Um, or a lot of people are walking their dogs in the area. You want to make sure of that. But it normally it'll grow around your house and you won't even have to search very far for it. And I have more exciting news. So since my last video asking if you wanted to know more about herbs and, uh, and wanted to learn with me, uh, and I, I had such a good response and thank you so much. I really appreciate it and the comments were wonderful and I look forward to sharing more with you. But since then, I reached out to an herbalism school it's called the Commonwealth Center for Holistic Herbalism, and they're located in Boston, but they have an online program. I reached out to them, and I'm going to be working with them on uh, providing you with really good information on herbs and to know that I'm correct in what I'm sharing with you. Uh, I don't ever want to share anything that could be detrimental to anyone. So I'm partnering with them, so there's more to come about that. But they do have a free mini course just to get started and tell you about them and how they do herbalism. And I'm gonna link that in the description below and you can check that out. It's pretty short, it's uh, videos. They also have it in audio form and then they have a printout too that, that goes along with it, with the stuff that you can learn. So uh, it's really short, but I found it to be a lot of good information, and I think you will too. So there's more to come about that, but I'm super excited about it, and uh, that's all I have this time. If you have any questions about plantain and other uses for it, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. I look forward to uh, interacting with everyone and getting a chance to talk to you uh, through the comments. So leave me some comments and until next time, grow on. Bye. So I planted two trays of steaks. The battery is dying. Why must the battery die in the middle of filming? I don't know.